So as a traditional painter myself, I find it fascinating in digital painting how you can separate it into layers this way. And you know, work from a sketch into a base painting layer and then work on refined painting on top and actually see the progression. Like if I take the opacity of that refined painting and layer it on top of my base painting, you see how it just refines it, just defines edges more and more. So you just have to keep being bold and building it up. Yeah, and you want to be painting on the right layer. So that happens, you learn from it, you can lasso and duplicate, but that's why I, I lock every layer that I'm not painting on with that padlock. So if I accidentally am on that layer, it will give me a warning that it's locked. Now, refined is usually where you're going to spend your most time, but if you don't spend enough time on your base painting, then you have a lot a lot more to do in refined painting than you would otherwise have to do. So you get a feel for it and how it works for, for your sensibilities as you go. So as I'm kind of defining this, this nose, it really helps to have that base painting underneath without a lot of white shapes just default coming through. So I'm really just working on putting in color and then transitioning between these different blocks. And just like anything we've done in the class, having practice at doing this traditionally, you know, drawing, painting, just coloring things in general is going to help you with digital painting. It's all related. For those just starting, the hardest thing to get students to um, realize is they just don't need to be afraid of color. Color can really be their friend here, especially in digital art, because at any time we can just adjust the color, right? If we wanted to and take the saturation down and all of a sudden I have realistic color on my refined paint layer. What matters is the lights and darks. So black and white, super color. What matters is the lights and darks. But color can help you see that a little bit better. And the whole point of painting at like a 50% opacity is that no mark you make is ever wasted. You know, if you have to make corrections to it, it still leaves some textural signature, right? So you get all of this different beautiful layering, like watercolor coming through. And this is showing the pixels at 100%. So you will see all these edges when you print it, which is why you want to fully cover it in your refined paint as well with your custom brush. There's just a lot to do. So digital painting is easy to understand, but difficult to actually execute. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of creative bravery, but I want to introduce you to it and give you kind of the technical know-how for how to set it up and do it as efficiently as possible. Okay, so the tool a lot of digital painter artists like is the smudge tool. So I'll give you an example. On this forehead, I've got a lot of kind of bold shapes. So let me put them into the refined paint layer and fill it with some color. Get all of these and I'll turn off the base so you can see it, right? So the smudge tool is right here. It's underneath the gradient tool. Smudge looks like a little finger that you're using to blend your paint together. And if you think of your pixels as powdered pigment, like pastel, 
you can use the smudge tool with different brushes and at different strengths. I always like a strength lower than, than 30, kind of like dodge and burn. And you can push and pull your pixels together. And as they push and pull, they will blend. So I'll zoom in and show you. So I am not painting here. I am just smudging, pushing and pulling the pixels. And it's a great way to kind of soften and control edges. And I'm just doing it on my refined paint layer. Which is kind of a safe way to do it because then I'm not like messing up the structure of my base paint layer. So I'm not going to accidentally shift her nose off of center or something by blending it too much on one side. This is just playing with the lighting. But it will only affect the pixels that are in that refined paint layer. And then when I go back, it's going to remember my brush and all my settings as long as I haven't changed brushes. So if you're going to toggle between any tools while you're digitally painting, the smudge tool can be a nice one to play with. It's far more helpful to you than the eraser. You don't need the eraser at all when you're digitally painting. You just paint with a different color on top. And I have these, these pure pellet colors in the side just to remind me not to, to get into only using my mixes. So I don't use the smudge tool a lot myself because I like to mix just with the low opacity brush overlapping, kind of restating my areas. But some digital painters just adore that smudge tool and use it a lot. And you'll also notice I don't change my opacity on my brush that much. Some digital painters like to change that a lot. And some digital painters like to change brushes all the time. I just find that kind of a waste of time. So if you, if you want to experiment with different ways to blend, you can make a duplicate of your refined paint layer. But I am blending my refined paint layer. I have at 89%, you know, this is at 100%. But the way it's blending, so that's a big difference in my flat base layer. The way it's blending is simply by using colors at low opacities with this soft edge custom brush. And so everything always shows underneath that I do. Nothing is wasted. But if I wanted to use the smudge tool, I could blend the pixels that I've already put down a little bit. Especially edges between. The more you push and pull it, the softer it will get. And so in this way, if anyone's done watercolor and you take like a wet Kleenex to your watercolor, it softens your edge and can lift a little paint or blend it. That's kind of what the smudge tool can do. The computer is good at taking away sharp edges. But to me, that's kind of more of a finishing technique than it is the refined painting. Right now, I'm just still trying to model the form. And at any time, I can turn off my refined painting and see what's left. Or turn off, sorry, my base painting underneath. So I need to work down the nose. I need to work around the lips. I need to finish the forehead off. I haven't done that much with this eye, especially on the interior. And then, of course, there's the hair, the neck, the shoulders. All that stuff still needs to be done. It's just far too easy to focus on the fun stuff.
And we've got about 40 more minutes of class to work on this. And my hope is that I can finish the refined painting in this class period. And it will look like, you know, a digital painting done in a couple hours. But then next class, I want to show you ways that once you have your digital painting, you can really experiment with it using compositing, using some of the benefits of, of digital art that we've been exposed to all semester. which are some of the advantages of knowing how to do this stuff digitally. For someone like me who has ears that stick out from his head quite a bit, this is just a marvel how flat her ears are to her head. Just incredible. If you get bored working on that structure of the face, you can make yourself deal with some of the, the less interesting stuff, like getting color variations in some of the shadows, getting texture on the outfit. And the hair. I'm just using the brush tool and hovering over that option key a lot. And then I have my stylistic references, right? It's kind of these, these big changes, ideas for shapes. I can do something just random. I can use my lasso and just say, okay, I'm just going to make a big shape right here. And I'm just going to fill that with a color. What color? Let's see. I can use my brush. Fill it with this. I might put it on a new layer. Make my brush really big. Let's fill it. Deselect. Then I've got something to react to. I can move it around. I can warp it. I can play with it. I can play with its blending mode. It's just, if you get bored, just do it on a different layer, you know, work with it. So this kind of big red shape. Let's see what would be interesting. Make it screen mode and throw it into the hair. Or into part of the face.